uh, welcome to this very last session of this uh, long tour through uh, serverless uh, today. Um, I think it fits perfectly because we just talked about uh, this team new counters. And so uh, we already touched a little bit the hardware and I want to go uh, in this last talk uh, actually into the hardware and um, how we enabled microarchitecture research uh, for this new kind of workloads um, uh, by combining VHive and uh, well-known Gem5 simulator. So I'm David and I'm from the University of Edinburgh. Yeah. Okay. So as the presenter to say all, uh, before just pointed out, um, Serverless is a new class of workloads and uh, with own and unique characteristics and own challenges. And um, because um, even though the name serverless suggests a little bit there is no server, actually your workload needs to run on a server. And um, in fact, they run on very big servers in some data center somewhere, uh, but those servers or those hardware for, uh, is, even though maybe quite new, they are designed for conventional workloads. And uh, because serverless workloads are so different uh, to uh, these conventional workloads, um, that results in quite inefficient execution and a lot of waste in power and uh, energy, uh, energy and resources um, because, um, yeah, of this unoptimal uh, hardware. And so there's really a need for um, architectural support for these new kind of work workloads. The question is just how should, how should such a hardware look like? And to answer this question, we will talk, uh, I will present in this talk, we, we combined uh, VSwarm and VHive with the Gem5 simulator and to enable um, researchers to look into the uh, problems of today's hardware and to enable also the research for future hardware. Okay. Um, just overview what I will show. I mean, we have in VSwarm, you already know, but I don't know if everyone is familiar with Gem5, so I will just give a, a quick overview. Then what we need, or what Gem5 needs to simulate serverless workloads. And fi finally, I want to show with a small demo how to, um, run simulations or serverless workloads in Gem5. Okay, uh, and let's start with the Gem5 simulator. I don't know if, who knows, who knows about Gem5, I've heard about Gem5. Okay, at least not all. So maybe for some of you, it's interesting. Um, for the other ones, one minute, uh, uh, yeah. And uh, so Gem5 is a widely used uh, simulator for architecture and micro architecture. Um, it's quite modular. It, there's a large community and a lot of com um, contributors from academia, but also from industry. So just to name two of them, uh, Google and Arm are quite uh, big contributors to this code base. Um, it has, is, is a collection of uh, uh, different models. Um, it supports different instruction set architectures. So ARM, uh, x86, uh, but also Spark. Um, you can have, find various um, collection of tools, uh, components for uh, different uh, components in the sys, in a part of the system. So you have different core models, uh, in order, out of order core, fast and uh, more detailed cores. Um, but also for the whole memory hierarchy, you can configure 
very free and also some different DRAM models. Um, but it is not enough. So there's also the opportunity hook, to hook up some um, other additional tools, for example, a uh, tool to model power. And with that, you can somehow estimate a little bit your power, um, um, power utilization of your hardware. OK, so how do we set up Gem5 uh, to run serverless applications? So first of all, we have the Gem5 simulator itself. It's a code base. You can free, freely download it. Um, and then, um, as I said, Gem5 is just a collection of models. Um, what Gem5 needs is uh, you need to say Gem5 how to com combine these models and which models to use. So for this, you need a configuration file. Um, and in, in this file, you will define how you, which caches you want to use, which CPU, and yeah, basically how your system should look like. Um, then as soon as you define your hardware, you need, of course, a, um, a workload that you want to run on the, this hardware. In our case, it's, um, it's a Linux kernel uh, because serverless workloads run on Linux. Um, uh, for Linux, uh, we need a file system. Um, in our case, we'll use um, Ubuntu. Um, we will install it, or we already installed it on the disk. And also on this disk, you have your own um, um, serverless function. And finally, um, before you start uh, to to let Linux know what you want to do, you need a so-called run script. And in this run script, um, you define what, uh, yeah, what Linux, will, what Linux should do after boot. And in our case, we want to first start our function and then we want to invoke it uh, to um, measure the performance and get some statistical values. And if you have set up all of that, then you run the simulation. And finally, you get a stat file with a lot of counter values that are collected while this simulation, um, during the simulation. And then you can inspect this file and see, okay, where are the bottlenecks uh, of your hardware? Okay, then, Let's start and set up our system. So on the right, you can see um, the system, what we want to use to study um, our service function. Um, basically, I created the, the configuration for you, how to do your own configuration. You can um, uh, look into the um, Gem5 uh, files. Uh, in the Gem5 code base, there are a lot of examples how to set up and create configuration files. We will also um, open source uh, our own configurations very soon, so you can also start from them. And um, for this tutorial, I decided to use a very small configuration, very easy. So we have we have a two-core machine. Um, I, you can find this configuration already in the hands-on material. Um, so you can also look, have a look into that um, later on. You, um, yeah. So as I said, it's a two core machine. I, uh, it's an in-order core, it's a six instruction set architecture. Each of the core has uh, um, runs on two point, runs with 2.5 gigahertz. Each of the core is a private uh, IND cache, 16 kilobytes, and they share a common 128 kilobyte LLC and uh, also two gigabyte RAM. As you can see, the system, what we simulate, we simulate um, it's not really representative to a uh, 100 core out of order uh, machine with uh, 
60 megabyte of cache. So that what this is what we would expect when we uh, run things on a cloud. But to for demonstration purpose, um, I will use this smaller um, setup to just uh, have a uh, faster simulation. But we also will share um, a more um, reasonable setup um, very soon. Um, and then finally, we will um, isolate our core one from the rest of the system with the um, ISO CPU feature of, uh, of Linux. The reason for that is we want to put our function onto the second core. And then on the first call, we will run a client that will issue requests to the second core. And the reason why we uh, divide them on the, this two core is then we can, because we are only interested in the, um, um, in our function. So, and with having these two cores, we don't have interferences. So in the core, of course, there are interferences on the LC but there are also opportunities to uh, have different machines, but that I will show you later. Okay, so that is the system what we're going to simulate. Um, now we need our workload. And what we already prepared for you is um, our two parts. So first you need the kernel binary, um, we um, pre-built this, this, that already. You can find the kernel config also in your hands-on material. Um, this kernel is configured um, especially for um, Gem5. Uh, so all the modules are enabled to run, uh, to run it with Gem5. And also you need um, the modules to run uh, container images. Um, containerized uh, workload. This is also pre-configured. It is done for you. And also the file system is already prepared. So we have uh, the Ubuntu file system. And um, um, so with Linux installed and also Docker is already on it. And the only thing that is missing is your actual containerized function. And so, to put this function onto the disk, uh, what you need to do is pull the image from a repository where you have, you have already prepared it, um, and uh, then run a small test to check if everything works from a software perspective. And uh, to do this, we will use the Coemo emulator. The reason why we use the the emulator and not, not the simulator is, first of all, um, Cuemo is much faster because it only models functional behavior. And Cuemo has access to the internet that uh, we don't have in the, um, in the simulator. OK. Then it's now time for you to um, log into your machine again so that you have had before. Uh, I just put the command again here. So just use the same IP address um, and CD into the handsome material Gem5. Give you a little bit of time to do that.
Um, was, was everyone uh, able to find the folder directory? Okay. Um, yeah, and then the, the next thing is uh, you start the um, uh, Claymo emulator. I already installed it for you on the disk, uh, on the image, um, because the command is um, a little bit longer. So I put it in the sh in a shell script, just execute um, script dot uh, dash run Claymo. So I will do the, do the same. Uh, so you can also follow it here. You see um, Quemo is booting Linux. At some point it reaches the, um, the login screen. You might need to hit a few times the enter space um, to get into uh, to see the login screen, and then you simply log in as um, yeah, as usual, root password root. Um, so to make it easy for you. Was everyone able to log in? Okay, perfect. So the next thing we now we need to get our function image. So we pull it from the repository. Just for that, use the Docker pull command, um, and then your function image will use the vhive east dot dash as dot um, minus go. So, Docker pull. Okay, does everyone pull this this image onto the disk? Okay. Then, um, in principle, now everyone everything should work. But just to confirm, uh, let's do a small test. So, for our test, we first need to start the container. Uh, with container uh, docker run command. Uh, you, by the way, you can also find all the commands in the readme, also in this, uh, in the MD file of the hands-on material. Um, then you may don't need to. Uh, then you just you can just copy it. So let's just run and then name our container. And we, I want to, we detach from the container that we can stay in the same terminal. And then we also need to forward the ports uh, from 500.51 to Zero, zero, five, one. Okay, and then our image.
Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Kuimo uh, little bit uh, breaks a little bit your line wrapping. Um, just continue writing and hit the index space. Yeah, I think maybe I need to fix that at some point, but yeah. Uh, so, again, as you can see, the as, you, as soon as you see the hash key, um, your container should be started. Um, does it work for everyone? Okay, perfect. And then, so if the function is running, um, and then we invoke our function. Um, I just uh, put a, uh, installed a small client on your disk, on this disk image. It's a very basic uh, client. You can find the source code also in your hands-on material. Um, this client only needs the address and the number of invocations it should issue to the function. Okay, so client and then um, the address, of course we are on the same machine, so local host and the ports we just forwarded and we want to run it for 100 invocations. So worked, um, the client will output its progress every 10 invocations. So it's just a very basic small test to check if everything works software. software. Could could everyone follow it? Does it work for you? Okay, perfect. Good. Uh, so it worked. We will just um, we can now go to the simulator. Um, but so stop the container and shut down Quemo with the Docker stop and remove and shut down command. Okay, everyone shut down its machine again. Okay. Then we have now our configuration, our workload ready. So the last thing that is missing is the run script. Um, you can find the example of this run script also in your hands-on material. Um, if you open the script dash run function. So and in this function, it's basically all everything already set. The only thing you need to change is uh, the function image name to the um, na uh, to the yeah to the function we just pulled. So if we exit it. Uh, Okay, um, just what does, what is this uh, run script doing? Um, basically, 
it does almost the same thing as we just did before. So we start our container uh, with the same command as before. Then we will uh, pin the function to the call one. And then we will um, call a special instruction, um, this M5 exit. And this M5 exit, this, it's a special um, instruction provided from Gem5. Um, and it's a feature with that you can um, pause the simulation or exit the simulation mode. And then you can, you are able to switch the CPU model. And the reason why we use this feature is up to this point. So from, from booting, uh, starting the function this to this point, uh, until this point, we will run uh, another special feature of Gem5 and that is the KVM model. So because we are only interested in the, um, actual how the function is invoked and uh, the simulation during the invocation um, but if you want to if you need to simulate or even if you have the simplest model in gem5 booting linux and um, starting the function uh, in timing mode could easily take hours and to fast forward this process you can use this kvm uh, model so that is a quite nice feature. And yeah, that is why we need to exit the simulation at that point. We'll change the, uh, we change the CPU model that is in the configuration file. And then we will enter the simulation again and start our client. Same command as before. This time we'll only issue, um, for, we'll only issue 20 requests just to make the simulation a little bit faster that you can follow it. And finally, um, we call the M5 exit again to uh, exit the simulation. Okay, so that is already defined. So just that you know what, what this script is doing. Okay, now everything is in place. So we can, we could, in, in principle, we could start. You could also start the simulation now. The problem is the same as we had, as the presenter had before. Uh, um, Gem5 needs access to these special PMU counters, um, and that is not uh, that is something Google not provide for you because of security reasons. So uh, you cannot do it, unfortunately. So I will just do it on the Cloud Lab machine. And what I'm going to do is just to run the Gem5 uh, command um, with the results for uh, the results folder where I want to have my stats file. Then I'm where I might point to the configuration, um, the kernel binary, um, the disk image we prepared, and the run script. And while the simulation is running, I will attach to the um, simulation and then we can see what happens inside uh, um, the simulation. Okay. Let me just do this. Uh. Okay, now the simulator is starting and I will attach to it. So now we see um, The uh, just take a little bit longer. So 
you can see the, the simulator started the container automatically, pinned it to core one. And now you can see uh, the M5 exit, it was uh, executed. And on the right and the left hand side, you can see the core is switched. And it has entered the simulation again. And of course, now it takes much longer. Um, but now the client is started. And hopefully, in a few seconds, we should see if everything works um, how the first is uh, request is issued. Okay, now it, it was able to establish the connection. So, so seems to work. Let's wait for the time to invocation. We're done. The other 20 invocations. And finish. So, um, so now the, the simulation ended and uh, M5 ex uh, exit was executed again. So we should now see, um, have some results. The results are in the uh, results folder in the stats file. Um, the stats file is quite large, so because there is not just cycle and instructions, which we are interested uh, right now. Um, so I will just search search for them. So, and we can see we have about, um, yeah, 250 million instructions, uh, cycles, and 10 million instructions. Um, I also put a small, just a small script to, um, to calculate the uh, CPI uh, in the script folder. Ah, wait, I need to first point. <clears throat> okay, and here you have again the instructions, the cycles, and the cycles per instructions. So we have about 22 cycles per instruction. Yeah. Okay, so now um, everything worked. So we had, we did our first simulation of the of serverless workloads with Gem Five. Now, with all this setup ready, uh, we can play around with the parameters. Um, I will do a small example by changing the LLC size. Um, I I think you realized it. Uh, 128 kilobyte is not not very uh, large and not really representative. So I will just open the HM5 config dash uh, dash slash cache Python file, and uh, and then I will change the uh, LSC cache class. Um, there, I will change the size parameters from 128 kilobyte to two megabyte, and yeah, I will also just change the sensitivity from eight to sixteen. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's just do it. And uh, uh, caches. And OK. 
Okay. And yeah, then just run the simulation again, wait for completion, and then we will see what if there's any difference. Okay. So we attach again to see if everything works. So the call was switched. We now uh, run in detailed mode. Connection was established. So twenty invocations happened. Just wait for completion. And yeah, now we are done. Okay, and we can. Use the same script again to see what happens. And yeah, the cycles per instruction went from 24 to uh, 17. So, quite an improvement. So, um, the, the cache was important. Um, that was just a, just a small example. I mean, you, you realize, so 17. Cycles per instruction is still uh, really bad. Um, but uh, as I said before, so I just used a very simple setup. Um, in order core, yeah, should be. If I model it out of order core, Gem5 provides this. I will also uh, give you um, some configurations with a more reasonable setup uh, very soon. And, uh, but for the to model a uh, out of order call, I mean, that would, it's not so good for demonstration purposes, then you have, would need to wait longer for your dinner. So that's mm -hmm. why we use, better why I just use this simple model. But in principle, you have now everything to do your own uh, um, research. And, um, but, this is not all what, what we already provide for you. We, um, we uh, with Reswarm, we will um, release uh, several standalone kernel functions that already worked with Gem5. Um, and in principle, we can also support any kind of uh, containerized workloads uh, with this setup. Um, it's just a matter of how long the simulation take. That was now a very short function. Uh, if you take longer functions, then of course you need to simulate much longer. Um, and I also pr presented you now a setup with a one core machine with two cores, but we also have a setup with two machines connected over uh, ethernet. And with that setup, you can, um, um put your function not just on the same machine but on on the other machine and then you can issue requests to this other machine and then have 
really the isolation between uh, two different yeah, systems. Um, yeah, that is what we have already. And the things we are working at the moment and what we uh, want to do is we want to fully support uh, our entire benchmark suite. So with all the functions, uh, Dimitri just um, showed to you today. Uh, we also want to uh, support Knative to run Knative in Gem5. And hopefully we can also support virtualization. Um, and um, what we also want to do is we want to support these distributed workloads that you have not just two machines, but several, and then you connect them over network. And then you have several uh, functions, each on a different core, and they communicate between each other. So that would be a more realistic system what you would have. And then with this setup, you can uh, explore all the uh, uh, hardware, what uh, problems, what we, what current hardware uh, have. Um, yeah, so as I said, um, the first part will release quite soon. Um, and the other parts we are working on, and we are ha very happy uh, for any contributions or uh, any hints what we can do. So uh, stay connected to the VHive uh, and VSwarm repositories. Um, and with that, <clears throat> I want to summarize just what I was talking about in this talk. Um, first of all, um, these serverless workloads are quite new. They are they represent a new class of workloads with own characteristics and own challenges. And the execution of these new kind of workloads uh, result in quite inefficient uh, execution in the data centers and waste a lot of energy and uh, resources. So we really need um, architecture support for these new workloads because they are more and more emerging. And by combining VHive and VSwarm uh, with the Gem5 simulators, we um, give you a tool in, or we give you the collection of tool in the hand, how to analyze existing hardware limitations. And we also enabled you the uh, research in for architectural support of these new serverless workloads. And with that, I want to say, say thank you. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, your Docker image? Um, no, the Ubuntu image. The Ubuntu image, um, you will find, so you, you can also find it in the uh, hands on material. Mm -hmm. There is this readme file, but there is not just the readme file how you go over the steps, which I did. There is also a readme file uh, how to set up things. And we have um, config files and also shell script how to combine the kernel, how to um, combine, how to install the disk image or how to create the disk image, so the base disk image with Ubuntu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is, you will find there. And you will also find a script that compiles Gem5 for you. Yeah, that's basically you just need to enter three comments and then, um, yeah, okay. just enter this. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so what uh, what 
Um, you can, for, to answer this question, you can go into the uh, Gem5 config and there's the, there's a, um, basically what, what this command does is exit the simulation and goes back to this. I don't know, you have worked with Gem5, right? Yeah. So, and then you, you have to, your, your Python file where you where define your configuration and, and, um, at some point you will instantiate your system and then you will um, simulate your system. And what this M5 exit is, it is just, it exits the uh, simulation. And if you, then you can, but you are still in the Python file. So you can change things and then you can enter the simulation again. So, and it will continue at that point where it exited. You can also do this in a loop and never exit the simulation if you want. Um, so uh, yeah, you can check the um, this configuration files. I mean, you have it now and you can use it. And also, I think I think I, I made a pointer in the in the README file where all these informations are in the documentation of Gem Five. Um, I have them in mind, yeah, <laughs> the list in mind, uh, but uh, um, so it's it's not pub, it's it's not it's not pushed yet on the in the repo, but we will do this quite soon. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. We just didn't have the time to do it for before the conference. We wanted to do it, but yeah, it was not just limited time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's x86, yeah. Um. So. Um. In principle, yes, and I have also almost all the setup also for ARM. Um, the thing is, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's possible, yeah, Let, let's say. It's just um, um, the moment we did most of the, our studies, in x86, um, but with ARM, it's, it's basically the same. And also I have to say, um, I think, especially for Gem5, I think the R models are often better than the x86 models. They are often uh, a little bit outdated. Yeah. Are there any questions on the Slack channel? I don't know. I do. I have a question. Yeah. yeah sorry, it might be a slip. Uh, like how exactly V high is integrated with Gem5? Uh, how we V high? How, how is how is V high integrated with Gem5? Um. So. Vhive is not, it's not directly Vhive, it's more the uh, vSwarm um, benchmark suite. So we use the uh, vSwarm benchmark suite uh, for, um, uh, we use the, use the vSwarm benchmark to run in Gem5. But we, okay. as, I said, as I said, we want to also run Knative in, um, in Gem5, and then we would need uh, Vhive because Vhive has, has all the setups for uh, Knative. So at the moment, it's still only with Morm, but there are plans to do it also. Uh, let me also comment on this question. Yeah. Um, so, 
All right. Uh, the, the most important change that required to Jim Fiber was uh, uh, to build a kernel so that we can write containers there. Uh, so uh, once we can run any container, the next step would be to port the entire container infrastructure, which is Kubernetes. The only limiter to run Kubernetes is uh, to run containers. So we're just past the first step, the most important one. And um, the second one uh, is on our like, uh, neck, like in next step. And finally, um, the third step would be to support virtualization and micro VMs and distributed systems. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, so I think there are no more questions. Ah, yeah. Uh, so what is the Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's exactly what we see. And I mean, now you have the tool. You can uh, you you can you can do your own research in it and also try to improve it. I mean, now you have everything, and that's why we did it because it's it's really the problem that uh, these functions are so short. They invoke them very sporadically, and so hardware sucks. I, I think it's important to do your own so what is your engineer? You may want to study what is the effect of having different cache hardware, different cache sizes, different format architecture, maybe some specialized hardware to accelerate the function. So things that are hardware related that you cannot do on your hardware because you can't change the hardware. That's what a simulator allows us to do. Yeah. Well, the simulator simulates the processor simulates the hardware. So as such, you're in control of it. Right. So you know, if you you can't change any hardware related parameters, they're not right? you are just contractual. Um, and the simulator allows you to change everything. And and of course the accuracy, how it depends on the model you're using. And uh, of course if the model is not so good, then yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't have any like concluding remarks. I just wanted to say that the people who are online again, both the audience and the presenters, thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you have any questions, please contact us. We have a lot of stuff on uh, already released. So at uh, on GitHub, um, we hive and we swarm, and we'll be releasing stuff in the in the coming months. I think there's a lot of cool stuff planned. So thanks again.